week's Ask Dr. Mike segment, we're talking with veterinarian Dr. Mike Hutchinson about cancer and our pets, and we want to welcome Dr. Mike this morning. Hi, good morning. Hi, this is a tough one, but we had a very specific question come in from Ray. He has a four-year-old golden retriever, Tony, who the doctors believe he has uh, some sort of lymphoma. Okay. And his question was, um, they think that the cancer's gone, they can't find it, do they treat with radiation? That was his next question. Oh, well, that's a good question. I, I would say lymphoma is an immune cell cancer, so mm -hmm. it, it attacks the whole body, unfortunately. So radiation wouldn't be a great choice for that because that's more for local treatment. Chemotherapy would be the one that they were probably speaking about, right. you know, and I can talk about both of them. Chemotherapy, everybody knows they give a drug and they're trying to attack cancer cells, but unfortunately all cancer treatments um, that we use chemotherapy or radiation, I should say, attack normal cells as well. They don't just right. attack. So they try to limit it to the type of chemotherapy that that cancer might be sensitive to. Radiation is more specific. It's usually for an inoperable tumor or maybe a tumor that we can debulk, but we can't get it all. Mm -hmm. And then they can direct radiation in a beam right directly at that area and try to destroy the cancer around it and stop the cells from dividing so that they don't spread again. So his question was, if they can't find the cancer, if they think he's in remission, do they go ahead with these expensive and possibly painful uh, treatments? Well, in dogs, fortunately, they don't seem to have the side effects to chemotherapy that we do. But if you were to ask me if I were to do that with my dog, my answer would be a, a, a loud no. Okay. I wouldn't go forward with that if they couldn't find the cancer. If I couldn't find the cancer in my dog, and I couldn't type it and be positive, there's no way I'd go forward with it. Now, I know a four-year-old golden retriever with lymphoma is not a good diagnosis. That's a horrible diagnosis. So they have to really keep vigilant. But what I do is a multimodal approach, and most oncologists agree with this as well. Nutrition is key. You wanna, so cancer, a lot of people don't know this. Otto Warburg, back in the 30s and 40s, won two Nobel Prizes, and one of the things he discovered that still exists today is cancer loves um, sugar. So it's what we call a faculative anaerobe, big word that just means they like sugar. So we put them on a keto type diet, which is primarily protein and fat. Okay. And we try to direct it and give them supplementation to attack, not attack the cancer, but to support the normal cells so that it doesn't give in to the cancer and then starve the cancer. And then direct either chemotherapy, radiation, or newer uh, technologies, immunotherapy. And that means we take some of the cancer, they make a vaccine with it, you know, put, put something to stimulate the immune system back with it, and then try to turn the immune system against the cancer. Now that I'm all for, because that only attacks cancer cells. That doesn't attack normal cells. So I've heard a lot about the keto diet, and people too, it's yeah. becoming, much more popular and very, I don't want to say trendy, but it seems to be the big diet well, now. It might be a trend now, but it's a it's something that we've used for years in animals. Now, cats are true carnivores, so they eat meat anyways. Right. Dogs are not true carnivores. They're like us. They eat some grains, carbohydrates, just like we do. They need the nutrition. So we can switch them to a keto diet with direction, make sure it's nutritionally complete, and it supports the immune system, and it supports their health, and it starves the cancer, which is what we'd like to accomplish. So is that something that you can uh, you can do with a dog food, or is it something where you're preparing their, their meals? It's probably going to be easier to prepare, but there are some dog foods now that are turning their companies, that are turning their attention towards it because they're starting to publish more success stories with keto diets and cancer. So it is one of my recommendations. I also supplement heavily with antioxidants that are, have been shown uh, to help support the normal cells and starve off the cancer cells. Well, I know we can't get too deep into this issue. Um, golden Retriever is one of those uh, breeds that tend to have cancer a lot, right? Yeah. So um, we were just talking about health insurance, and this is one of those things, if you have health insurance for your pets, definitely can help. It's wonderful. You can't get the health insurance once they have the cancer, of course, but I like uh, pet insurance for catastrophic coverage, things like cancer, things like being hit by a car, things that you can't plan. Right. You know, they eat the Christmas bulb off the Christmas tree and need a big surgery, a broken bone. That's what I think insurance is very, very good for. I honestly don't think people should get pets if they can't afford the vaccines or the prevention for heartworm and right. flea and tick controller. You know, you shouldn't have a pet. You should plan on those expenses. But for these other catastrophes, can it's, cost thousands. it's wonderful to have. And, and some of these cancer therapies get upwards of $20,000. So it's very expensive. Same kind of cancer therapy that people get is given to our pets and the same kind of dedication by board certified oncologists. Great. Well, thank you so much. You're we welcome. want to thank Ray for his question. Thank you for submitting that and best of luck to his Good dog, luck, Tony. Ray. Good luck. Uh, thanks to Dr. Mike, of course, for his uh, 
Great insight and for his segment here on PTL's regular segment. You can listen to his podcast as well and find him on KDKA Radio.